Hello, uh, welcome back to a, another quick video. Uh, actually, it might be a little bit longer than normal. Uh, this is a video today on a build that I've been tinkering with to try and work on a boiler build that can sort of power itself. Um, I am in debug, full disclosure before we start. I'm in debug as we normally are when we're tinkering. And I will just say that a lot of the stuff that you can see on the screen at the minute isn't actually part of the build. It's more just symbolizing where your uh, liquids would be stored in your base. So a lot of these tanks up here of little bubbles of liquid essentially they'd be wherever you've got your oil and water and polluted water supplies in your base um, now I'm going to explain the build pause just to begin with because it's a bit easier to go through and then I'll kick the build going and show it in action basically so the premise here is that we want to be boiling oil into natural gas and ideally generate a bit of power whilst we're doing it so i've got a steam turbine in the middle of the bo uh, boiler here now you'll have seen many builds like this before it's a pretty common uh, layout that most people do you've got a magma volcano here connected to some metal tiles then down here we've got some temp shift plates a mechanized airlock and then a temp shift plate and then your boiling plate so i've just got a single metal tile here the idea for this as we've we've shown you on a few videos before um, you can control when you want to transfer the heat from here to here, um, thus cooking your oil or not. There's no point just burning uh, energy for no reason, basically. So you want to be able to toggle it off and on. Now, we have a supply of oil over here, and I'll just show you the liquid overview first. It's a little bit daunting, but I'll, I'll explain what's basically going on here. We have a supply of oil here that we've got at like 70 degrees. Uh, idea being that if you dig down to an oil biome, chances are you'll probably find an area that's between 70 and 80 degrees. So I've started with warm oil just to show you. Um, what this will basically do, when this is triggered on by our um, hydro sensor down here, um, it will then pump some oil into this system. This valve out here will then limit the flow to, I think, three kilos a second at the minute. Um, and that will flow through this pipe here and into some radiant piping. Okay, this radiant pipe and then cycles through the room, then goes into these metal tiles here at the bottom of our steam turbine, that's quite important, um, and then cycles through a little bit, comes through this insulated pipe and through our vent. Okay, now the reason we're doing this is we want to um, take some of the heat that's already in this natural gas that's in the room and use it to warm up the oil before we boil it. Okay, so the oil's coming in at 70 degrees. By the time it gets down here, we want it quite hot. We don't want it to boil, because then it'll break our pipes, but we do want it to be quite hot. So I've got it running through this upper part of the steam turbine, and then the lower part of the steam turbine, which is warming up the steam turbine for us as well. Um, and then it goes through a little pocket of gas down here, and then dumps out of our vent. And chances are, by the time it gets down here, it's probably only 30, 40 degrees away from boiling. Uh, you want to get it as close as you can without it essentially breaking your pipes. Okay, so that's how our oil enters the system. Our steam turbine in the middle, I've separated into two parts. So we've got a couple of insulated tiles on the side here, a couple of airflow tiles, a couple of abyssalite temp shift plates just to try and stop some of the heat transferring through. And then inside here, we are using, I will just full disclaimer, I'm holding my hands up now, you can't see because I've not got a camera on, but full disclaimer, we are using the slightly bugged um, steam turbine build, whereby we've got some hydrogen in the top of the build here, and that's going to help push our gas around. It is a known exploit at the minute, so if you do want to build this, you need to bear in mind that it may well change in the future. But what this basically does is forces our steam to move around the room a little bit. It doesn't have to be hydrogen, just any gas that's lighter than steam. Um, and then that pushes your steam down and we get like an intermittent use out of our steam turbine. I'll explain that more in a minute. Now, over here, we have a little bit of automation and a mechanized airlock. And this is to toggle the main boiling chamber to our gas collection chamber. And all this is, is some dead easy automation. We've got one switch here that's looking for a temperature below 270, another switch here that's looking for above 220. So if it's in that 50 degree range, it'll toggle on our AND gate. And then we've got a little filter gate here that's basically saying, as long as we've got a signal for more than one second, activate, okay? And that just opens or shuts this door. Um, I'll go through the rest of the automation now because it's actually very straightforward. A lot of these switches in here are just for pumps and toggling off external things. Um, this Atmos sensor here is basically saying if you if there is any gas in this room, I want you to toggle on this pump. And this pump primes the system for our radiator cooling at the top here. And this radiator cooling here is just using some 
40 degree polluted water, assuming that you've got it from your asteroid or you've got some kicking around in a pool somewhere, um, fills this radiant pipe, which will then circulate through the room and goes to this liquid shutoff pipe. Okay. At this point, the liquid has two choices. It will either enter into our overflow chamber, which is like your storage pool, okay, or it will carry on its merry way and continue along the radiator. Basically, it'll cycle unless it's above a certain temperature. And the way that I'm doing that is with a pipe sensor over here. This pipe sensor is connected with automation to this and basically says if the water goes above 60 degrees, dump it out into here. Okay. Reason being, we don't want to boil this water in our pipes again. The, the pipes will break, we end up releasing steam and clean water into the build, and you don't want that. So I've aired to the side of caution, I've got it around 60 degrees. If it goes above 60, dump it into another pool. And that's why we've got this tank of polluted water here that's at around 60 degrees. Okay? So again, these wouldn't have to be part of the build, these would be somewhere else in your base, wherever you're storing your water. Uh, the pumps themselves, dead easy, we've got two pumps up here. They're bridged together into one pipe, and then these just go in, into a um, chamber here to collect our natural gas. Obviously, you'd be probably burning it in a natural gas generator. Um, I've just whacked down a quick tank here just to get rid of the natural gas. I don't really care about the natural gas. I was more playing about with the boiler itself. Um, so that's the upper part pretty much sorted. Uh, that's, again, just some polluted water that you've probably got kicking around from slime biomes and things like that. Um, down here, we've got a little bit more automation. Uh, again, dead straightforward, though. We have a hydro sensor that's underneath our vent here. This is where our oil comes in and this hydro sensor is basically saying if you are above five kilos stop doing what you're doing okay and providing we've got down here a knot gate and a filter gate providing that signal is strong for two seconds it will actually trigger the command because we are going to have fluctuating liquid levels depending on whether our petroleum's boiling or crude oil is sat there or what so we want it to be a strong signal for a couple of seconds that's why we've got a filter gate here this then either toggles the uh, mechanized airlock here closed or open. So if we need heat into the build, i.e. we've got liquid sat here, we want this door to be shut so the temperature can transfer. Okay, That will then boil off our oil and when this is less than 5 kilos, it'll toggle shut. Uh, toggle open, sorry. Okay. Um, the automation continues over here and then goes to our oil pump. And that's basically saying if there's no oil here, we need some toggle this pump on and tick it on as soon as it gets a signal this stops however some of the oil that's still in this pipe will carry on feeding through the valve and you just need to adjust your sensor for that i've dialed my sensor right down to like five kilos because there's generally another well 10 20 30 40 50 60 kilos of oil that's going to enter the system so you want to factor in for that then we've got the batteries down here. Now the battery is very straightforward. I'll just show you there's no other power coming into the build. This was how I basically was kickstarting the build until I put the steam turbine in. So this circuit's all disconnected. Um, the steam turbine itself powers the build. And you can see this heavy watt wire comes down here and powers these five batteries at the bottom. Uh, these four at the bottom and then this one here. Okay. I've also got a little light here. It's wasting power, but it's just to show me when the steam turbine's active or when the system's got power, basically. Okay. Then we've got a transformer that comes off this heavy watt wire with a single battery on it, and that's powering everything. That's powering all these pumps and uh, liquid shutoffs and stuff. I was debating powering the doors, but honestly, you don't need to. They still work fine, nice and slow. Okay. Um, I've put a number of batteries in here because the steam turbine actually just generate way more power than we need to run all this stuff So you would be getting a net gain of power. You can use this elsewhere And this isn't factoring in the amount of power you're generating from your natural gas. This is just power from this build Okay um, Now on these batteries there is automation So this battery here is just basically toggling this transformer off basically when this battery is above 80% full we don't need to give it any more power, so we turn off the transformer until it drops below 40%. And that's just literally connect the wire from there to there. Couldn't be easier. Um, this single smart battery down here is basically if our power grid, like the main five batteries here, drops below a certain level, i.e. 30% full, then I want it to shut this door and cook the, the turbine a little bit. So that's what this is basically doing. It's, again, a filter gate and a knot gate, and it basically toggles this door shut which warms it up and then fills our batteries. Um, so I'll show you basically how it works now. As you can see at the moment, we're moving some natural gas. We've got some petroleum down here that's gently cooking up. Uh, our steam turbine is now kicking on, so we'll get a bit of a boost of power. 
and then it'll probably toggle off again in a minute. As I say, it's it's intimate and it's kind of meant to be. The reason we're doing this in the first place, I should probably just explain. The steam turbine is actually helping us cool the natural gas. So when you pass steam through a steam turbine, you lose an awful lot of heat. So the top of my turbine up here is way cooler than the bottom down here. Okay, so like whereas down here it's 282 degrees, up here it's 220. So I'm knocking temperature out of my natural gas. That means that there's less that I need to take out of it, meaning there's less that I need to uh, worry about with my radiator. Um, and that's, that's essentially why we're doing this. Now, our petroleum's raising in temperature at the moment. This needs to get to about 540 degrees, at which point we'll get a load more natural gas. And obviously our oil will kick on as well. So I'll just show you that all happening. And I'll try and pause it at different steps so you can see what our different systems are doing. So this should bu bubble off any second now. We'll get an explosion of natural gas. There we go. And then this switch will probably go below 5 kilos any second. Okay. When that happens, our pump over here should toggle on. Okay. And that will then start filtering through the room. And you'll see our oil's coming in at 70 degrees. Almost immediately, it's going to cook up to a much warmer temperature. Um, but again, this is cooling down our natural gas whilst heating up our oil as well. Now, our doors down here, if you've noticed, has opened. So we're no longer transferring heat. There's no point cooking this natural gas more than we need to because we're just baking the room then. There's no point. So we're going to wait till our liquid's down there. Um, our doors at the top are probably going to close because it's getting a bit warm. And our oil's going to carry on through the radiator. By this point, we're at 300 degrees down here. So our oil's nice and toasty. Our steam turbine's running. And then the oil will come through here, dump onto the hot plate, and once we're above 5 kilos, the automation will toggle off. This pump is no longer pumping. We'll get rid of these last few bits that are in the pipe. And that just filters through the system. Nice and easy. So this is just a proof of concept really, it's, a lot of people have been theory crafting stuff like this and I thought I'd just do a bit of tinkering and debug, it's something I want to build in my current playthrough on, on Twitch. Um, I'm lucky enough to have a, a volcano um, that's quite a big boy, I've probably got way more magma than this in my current playthrough so we'll probably do something with this. Um, it does use quite a bit of heat but I, I can't remember when I last replaced the magma to be honest, I've been tinkering with this for a while, it does use quite, quite a bit but it is quite efficient. Um, so as you can see, our petrol now just needs to cook up again. We've got plenty of natural gas in this chamber. This will need to cycle a few times in order to cool the natural gas a little bit. Um, but pretty soon, it should open up our airlocks. So once this goes above 220, it's actually cooled too much. But once this goes above 220, our door will open. Natural gas can flow into here and we'll start processing it. And as you can see, the temperatures in here are absolutely fine. We're at 40 degrees. Our natural gas is coming out. Uh, let's have a quick look. Natural gas is coming through here at 44, 45 degrees. Uh, so none of this has been spawned in. This is all what we've cooked in here. Um, so yeah, pretty pretty cool. Um, I say I hope that helps. Have a play with it. Um, I'll attach the save file so you can all have a tinker yourselves. Um, just as I say, bear in mind, a lot of this stuff is, is just synthesizing or symbolizing where your liquid storage would be in your own bases. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely power positive. I don't know just how much power it would generate, but um, again, it is sort of based around this, this turbine exploit at the minute. So some of you will hate this. This isn't a discussion about whether exploits are bad. <laughs> this is just to show a different way of handling a boiler. Um, and it works quite nicely. I should say we'll, we'll get another explosion of um, natural gas any second and carries on as it goes so yeah i uh, hope that helps much love guys uh, any other videos you'd like to see let me know uh, I, I am working on a playlist that is going to be predominantly for new players um however because there's new updates coming here and there it's a bit hard to put a playlist on youtube but anything you'd like to see just let me know uh, much love guys take it easy bye bye